I was expected to be independent from a very young age. I heard my mom say many times, you can figure this out on your own. And so when I wanted to zip around the neighborhood on my bicycle with the other kids and my older brother, there was no one there to teach me how to do that. I had to learn on my own. And when I wanted to cook something when I was little to eat, there was no one there to teach me how to cook. I had to learn that on my own. And when naughty thoughts started to brew and I started thinking about sex, there was no one there to explain that to me. I'm a totally self-taught man. <laughs> Much to the dismay of my wife. Now, um, bless the, my, my mom and my dad, bless their hearts. I would, I would best describe their parenting technique as sink or swim. It was you either figured out how to do it or you drowned. In a poetic twist, this is actually how I learned how to swim. There was a lady who lived at the end of our street, and uh, she had an underground pool, which is very rare in Oregon. And she used to let the neighborhood kids come and use her pool. And it was in this pool I taught myself how to swim. I started in the shallow end. Luckily, there was no bullies there to push me in. Started in the shallow end, and I watched the kids who looked like they knew what they were doing, and I just kind of mimicked their motions. And then I went to the edge, and I slowly held on to the edge, and I slowly went down to where my feet couldn't touch. And when I was sure that I could swim back to where it was safe, I would let go, and I'd immediately swim back. And I would do this a little bit further each time until I got to the end of the uh, swimming pool, to the deep end. And when I could let go there and swim back to where I was safe, I had learned how to swim. Now, I'm no Mark Spitz. I would, I would describe my swimming technique as um, propelled through the water on sheer willpower. But I get where I need to go, and I haven't had any problems. Now that I'm a parent, I have abandoned the sink or swim idea. I, I, don't want, I want my kids to be independent, but I don't want them to learn uh, in a rough way. I want, to, I want to help them. I want to support them. I want to give them those first uh, positive steps in whatever they do. So when it came to swimming, my wife and I got them swim, swim lessons. And we told them, if you can become proficient swimmers, we will take you to Hawaii. Now, before you judge me, as a parent who takes his kids to Hawaii for learning a life skill everyone should know, this trip was already planned but they didn't know that, and we used it as a motivational tool, and it worked, okay? So they learned how to swim, and we just went to Hawaii in February. Now, we were there, and um, we were in Poipu. We were at Poipu Beach. It's, it's a very popular beach. There's a lot of people, and there's good snorkeling. And my wife and my younger son, they had gone to the beach that was next to Poipu. And me and my older son wanted to go out and snorkel. We had two snorkel masks. One of them was your basic snorkel uh, scuba mask with the snorkel. And the other one was this uh, one piece. It, it covered your entire face and it had a tube at the top you breathe out of. Now I could tell that this mask was low quality. So I gave the good mask to my son because when you're trying to be a super dad, that's what you do. We walked out into the ocean together and when we got to the point where my son could no longer touch the bottom, I grabbed him and I held on. And he floated. And we walked out. And when we got to the point where I could no longer touch the bottom, I started to swim. I held on with this hand, and I swam with this arm. And he was able to see everything and snorkel. And we didn't go that far out. I started to get really tired, really fatigued very quickly. And I thought, this is weird because, you know, I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm an athletic guy. I shouldn't be getting tired like this. Maybe we should turn back around and get to somewhere where I can get my feet on the ground. When I turned around, the shore looked like it was a mile away. So I started swimming really quickly and frantically. And the quicker I, um, I, I used my arm here, the more panic I got. And so I yelled to my son, I said, you've got to start swimming on your own. He just floated there. He couldn't hear me. And I'm going crazy. I'm going like this. And I've got one arm and I'm holding on. And all of a sudden, it hits me. Sheer will power may not get me to where I need to go. And that second act of my life was about to end, and I was going to breeze right through the third act. <laughs> this is how I was going out. I wasn't going to make it. And so in one last ditch effort to get him, I, I ripped my mask off, and I said, you got to start swimming. you got to start swimming on your own. And nothing. Still. 
So I think, this is it. I'm going down. And then just like that, there's a lifeguard on a surfboard right in front of me. He pulls me up on the board. Another lifeguard comes from the side. He pulls my son up on his board, and they paddle us into the shore. My son has no idea what's going on. And we get to the shore, and he says, yeah, I saw you were uh, having some trouble. And when you, when you ripped your mask off, I knew you were in a lot of trouble. And um, he said, you know, those masks, those one-piece masks, they're, uh, they're not really great. They have, they have a lot of trouble getting oxygen. And a lot of times you end up just recycling your own breath. That was what was happening to me. I wasn't getting any oxygen to my brain. So I'm still in this daze, you know, the, the world is white, and, and, and my son still has no idea what's happening. I have to explain to him. I'm like, dude, I almost drowned out there. I was carrying you, and I'm swimming with one arm, and it just wasn't happening. And he said, Dad, why didn't you just let go of me and swim on your own? And I didn't have a good answer for him at the time. I don't have a good answer now. Maybe I didn't let go because I didn't really trust that he was proficient enough a swimmer to do it on his own. And if I let go, he was going to sink. Or maybe... I didn't let go because I wasn't getting enough oxygen to my head. I wasn't thinking straight. And when you're like that, logic just goes out the window. And so I just held on. Or maybe I was just so used to holding on that the idea of letting go, it never even entered my head. Well, I had to walk to the next beach and I had to explain to my wife what had happened. And we both agreed that almost drowning holding my son was a perfect metaphor for my life. Because for the last several months, probably several years, I have had trouble being a parent. I have felt like I'm drowning. You see, when we first got together, my wife and I had a plan. We said when we had kids, they were going to be our number one priority. But it was imperative, it was important that we keep something for ourselves, that we have a separate identity that wasn't just being parent. We knew we'd be better parents if we had that other thing to hold on to. And it was especially important for me because I had chosen to be the stay-at-home parent. And I was going to be in this shit 24-7. If I didn't have something else you know, to hold on to, I was going to get sucked in very deep. Now, my wife has done a great job of fulfilling that plan. Not only is she a great mother, she's a doctor and an activist and a school board president and a small business owner. She has learned to swim like Summer Sanders. <laughs> I'm having some trouble. See, I put my whole self, my whole focus, 100% of my identity into being super dad. And the problem with that is that when the, your kid fails, you fail. When your kid fucks up, you feel like a fuck up. And that roller coaster of parenting, that's all you have. I had nothing to hold on to. And so, every day, I was struggling. But you know, the kids have gotten older, and they've needed me less and less now. And there's this little voice inside my head that says, hey man, this is your chance to step out and get that thing, that identity, get something to hold on to. This is your chance to get that thing just for yourself. But I'm out there like this. And there's something I just cannot let go of. Maybe I can't let go because I'm afraid. These kids, they're not independent enough. They need me 24-7. If something goes wrong, I let go, they'll sink. Or maybe there's just something wrong with my brain. I know if I let go and I swim over to where I can get my feet on the ground and I get some breaths in, I'll be a better swimmer, I'll be a better dad but I'm not thinking right. I think years of resentment, this, this anger I have about what I gave up and what I've lost and what I've become and the fact that my wife is doing so well with the plan and I am doing so poorly that it's just getting recycled in my head and logic went out the window. And so I, I'm holding on. Or maybe I'm afraid. Maybe... Fear is keeping me holding on. And the, the thing that I thought was actually dragging me down is the thing that's, only thing that's keeping me up. And then if I let go and try to swim on my own, I'll sink. So 
So it's getting pretty bad. And I'm holding on and I'm trying to figure out what to do. And the days are getting darker. And just when I think I can't do it anymore, boom, my wife shows up. And she makes me tell her what's going on because I don't want to talk about it. I'm a man. And she pulls me on her board and she paddles me in to shore. And I know I need help. So I start to see a therapist, talk it out. I probably should have done this years ago. And I start taking medication, happy pills. I probably should have done that years ago. And I realized that life is not just sink or swim. There's a third option. Rip off your mask and yell for help. And I did that. Now, I am a storyteller. Storytelling, being here tonight, is a gift for me because it's the one thing that I've I've glamored onto. The one thing that's for me. The one thing that is not being a dad. So I've moved toward that. I've gravitated towards that. And I did this one-man show. And I was so excited and proud about the show. I said, I want to do this more. I want to do it again. And so I started calling around to other theaters and cities, and, um, I, which, is a great, which was amazing for me because I was being proactive about something that wasn't being dad. I was really trying to embrace this idea of being a storyteller. And so I got a couple theaters. And um, a couple weeks ago, I was sitting down to, write, to sign the contract for one of these theaters to perform. It's the Bovine Metroplex Theater in Denver, Colorado. I'll be there August 30th. If you're in town, you should come see. If you know anybody, tell them about the show. Tell them to come. <laughs> Anyway, I'm about to sign the contract, and I can't. And this fear comes over me. I think, what the hell am I doing? I can't leave for three days to go tell stories. This is ridiculous. Who's going to take care of the kids? So I immediately text my wife, and I say, I'm not sure that we should be doing this. I I don't know if this is a good idea. And she calls me immediately. She says, we will make this work. You have to sign the papers. Please sign the papers. So I do. But it's still a struggle for me. I'm out there with one arm. And whatever it is I'm holding on to, I'm not sure I'm ever going to let go of it. But I feel like I've ripped that mask off. And I'm starting to think a little bit clearer. And, you know, I'm letting go every once in a while to do a double stroke and then grab it back. (laughs) Just get two strokes in and grab it back. And I'm very confident that eventually, not too far in the near future, I will get to that point where I don't have to worry about sinking or swimming. I'll just be able to stand with my head above the water. Thank you.